Here's another quick CTF walkthrough to give you a taste of the hands-on hacking series at IT Pro TV. All right, so Funbox 2 is the vulnerable virtual machine that I've downloaded from vulnhub.com. That's gonna be our, our guinea pig for today's episode. And if I do an LS, you'll see I've done a little bit of pre-gaming for us because time is of the essence. I've got my Nmap scans done and I've done a little bit of Nick 2 and Go Busters, which should also kind of uh, allude to what we found. Let's take a look at this all ports file, cat Nmap all ports. This shows us all the ports that I found. If you're looking for the command that I ran, hey look, there it is right there. And here are the ports that I have discovered, 21, 22, and 80. And of course, the services are being kind of uh, explained for what that is, in case you didn't know. Hopefully you do by now. But now if I go to my Nmap and my deep scan, where I kind of go a little bit deeper, I want to get some service uh, information, versioning, all that good stuff. Let's scroll up. You can see that I'm running Pro FTPD 135E. Could be possibly something interesting. We got port 22 is open, so a little SSH happening for our connectivity. And of course, port 8080. I do see this slash logs information, and there's one disallowed entry in this HTTP, or it looks like just robots.txt. That makes it look like it's together, but it's not. So usually when I see something like that, that's when I run that uh, Go Buster. Let me look for some directory traversal. So I will just grep out. I'll do a dash V for 403. I don't want any um, aired ones. I just want to see what I could actually get to in my gobuster.txt file that I created. You can see I've just got two um, recursive entries here. Basically a robots.txt, which we saw in Nmap, and index.html, which should be the landing page for the web application. Okay, now let's check that Nikto file. Let's cat Nikto and see if anything interesting is here. Um, XSS protection not defined. We get some allowed methods here. Get post options and head. Get an icons readme, nothing crazy. We do also see here that there is a robots.txt entry with one entry that is being disallowed. Okay, well let's jump over to the web browser. Let's go to 10.10.10.3. If you're wondering how did I know that? Well, I just ran a little scan on the on my network here, it's a local one. So there you go, just slapped it in the URL box, not seeing a ton of stuff there. Let me put that robots.txt file and see what that disallowed entry is. Oh, okay, we're seeing that it's the same as what we saw before, that forward slash logs. So I can come over here, just remove that, type in logs, and we see that it's not found. So this was uh, a troll, I kind of ran it down a little bit, didn't see a whole lot as you should always do when you hit on that landing page. But this is the, the standard Ubuntu, um, or I'm sorry, Apache landing page for Ubuntu. I didn't see anything crazy going on there. Nothing in the code. So if you right click, do the whole view page source thing, there was really nothing that caught my eye in this for at least not the first go round. We'll always check. A little, little bit of this action happening, but nothing crazy. Some floating stuff, right? Standard stuff. All right, so that wasn't my port of entry. Not a problem. It's not the only game in town. We had a couple other things. Let's clear the screen. Uh, let's do that Nmap all ports. I'm not sorry, not all ports, the deep, deep scan. And we did see that we also had that FTP. Now I could do some uh, looking for exploits for that specific version. Let's do that 135E if I'm not mistaken. So I'll do a search exploit exploit of FTP, what was it, uh, was it VS FTPD? Who was that? Pro FTPD, gotcha. Pro FTPD 1.3.5. Let's see if anything comes up. We do have a couple of remote exploits here. I'll save you the, uh, the suspense. I went through a couple of these. None of them really worked with our system. I was like, wah, wah, okay. I'm, I'm kind of stuck here. What is going on? Why is nothing working? I thought, well, you know what was funny is I didn't I didn't see any results from Nmap when it came to like any information about it trying to log in. So I should manually check that. It's always a good idea to go back manually check that manually see if you can log in through anything with SSH. We've kind of gone down the um, the HTTP range. So let's check that out here. If I just FTP into 10.10.10.3, which is our target. I do notice it's kind of taking a second here, right? It's not immediately jumping to attention. Um, I'm kind of waiting. I, I do want to see if any input or output comes back from me. Oh, and there it is. 
there it is saying, okay, I've got this server. You're just asking for a name. That's probably why I didn't get anything back from Nmap. So I'll just try anonymous, anonymous. Give it a password of Anani. And oh, look, I was allowed to log in. And you can see that I'm logged in. Great. Let's do an ls a, do an l as well. I can see there's a bunch of files in here, which is awesome. And I have read permissions on all of them. So I might even have write permissions on. Isn't that crazy? Well, maybe I don't. No, I don't have write permissions because I'm logged in as anonymous. That's for the user that actually put this in here. And we got one. This tom.zip is read, read, read. Hmm. That's probably the one I'm wanting to go after. But I also have some hidden, I have a hidden file. Well, two hidden files. This one, this dot at admins and dot at users. All right. So basically, I want the whole shebang here. So I'm just going to download. Let's see if I can do a get star dot uh, zip. And, ah, oh yeah, didn't, didn't like that. No such file directory. I was hoping wildcards would work for me. We'll, we'll do the old hard way, right? Anna.zip. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to grab Tom because I think Tom, Tom's got some interesting functionality going on. The fact that his permissions are different is strange to me. So I'm going to grab Tom.zip. There we go. And I also want to grab that welcome message. I'll get that. Welcome.msg. And then if I do an ls-al again, what was it? Dot at admins. So I'll get dot at at admins. All right. Looking at anything else? Not a big deal. Okay. So let's uh, let's get out of here. I'll, I'll quit. I think that's what you got to do. There you go. And I should now, yes, have. I got tom.zip right there. I've got that welcome message. And if I do an ls-al, <laughs> ls-al, if I can get my fingers in the right spot of the keyboard, I also have that dat at admin, dot at admins. That's hard to say. It's fun to say, though. So let's cat that. Cat dot, dot let me just tab it out. Nope. At, at admins. I'm a horrible typist. Ooh, that's, that looks fun. That's a base 64. Let's jump that. I'll just do a little copy, copy. Actually, what you can do? Let me clear this out here. I'll bring that back up and I'll just pipe that into base 64-D to decode it. There we go. We got we got ourselves a little bit of a of a message here. Hi admins, be careful with your keys. Find them in the percent your name percent dot zip. The passwords are the old ones. All right, that's telling me that uh, someone is probably not doing good password security. If he says the passwords are the old ones, almost guarantee that one of those old passwords is probably pretty bad because now they're old, right? And then it says regards root. Okay, great. Good for us root. So now we know. Now we did grab tom.zip here. So let's see if we can do like an unzip. Um, yeah, unzip tom.zip. And it is looking for a password, but it does show us that inside of the zip, this little file called id dot or id underscore rsa that is most likely the private key for logging in through ssh so i totally want that just try nothing nah password incorrect hi huh? would could have been too easy i could try to guess i can brute force that just by guessing but i want to speed this up i've done this before and as i do i keep a file for just such occasions when i don't remember exactly how to do these things it's highly recommended Let's grab this. It is called a uh, zip cracking. There we go. That's what I called it. Probably not in your Kali distro. It's in my, I created this file, but now you can see mine and, and see how to do this with a little utility called F crack zip. Just got to throw these options at it. Tell it the path to the dictionary file. Cause we're going to do a dictionary brute force attack against it. And then of course, whatever the zip file is. Okay. So we can use a dictionary attack. It's going to be verbose. Tries to unzip the first file with current password guess and removes false positives. And then of course, here's the password dictionary file. So let me grab this. Oop, too much, too much. Getting crazy. There we go. Copy, paste it in, paste. And then it says path to the dictionary. I'll just use rock you because why not, right? Slash uh, user share word lists rock you dot text. If you're running Kali, that's probably where you will find that. Um, Word file, the dictionary file. All right, and then the password, which are the uh, zip file, which is tom.zip. 
Hey, yay, it did find the password. Password found. Excellent. There is the password. So I'm going to copy that. And then hit enter. And it's looking for that password. I'll just paste that in there. And there we go. It did say inflating IDRSA. So if I do an LS, I now have the IDRSA file right there waiting for me. And I can cat that ID underscore RSA. Oh, yes. Ooh, RSA key goodness. Now, I do need to set some permissions on that or it's not going to work if we try to SSH in with it. So I need a chmod. And I just do a 600 for, um, what was it, IDRSA. And from there, I should be able to SSH dash I with the IDRSA and say I'm logging in as Tom at, and we were 10, 10, 10 dot three, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Hey, I'm logged in. Great. So I've got some good access here. I'm all shelled up, having a great time. One of my favorite things to do in this instance is to go ahead and try sudo dash L sudo dash L. Oh, you know what's going to happen? I don't actually have Tom's password. I have his SSH key. So unless I, you know, it's something crazy like password or, oh, uh, I'll try root. How about Tor? Ah, want want right? So those, those aren't going to work. Long story short, that's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up a little bit of the process here and explain that I went through a lot of stuff. I actually have a script that I typically run. Let me just split the thing here. And if I go to my slash root slash tools, dub, dub, dub. Well, this is, I'll show you what I'm doing. Python dash M simple HTTP server on port 80. I'm going to grab this with wget from my server, dot, which is dot four. It's a little script I have called privy.sh. And you'll see that throughout the hands-on hacking show. I use it a lot. Do a little grab there. As you can see, it was successful. If I do an ls, hey, hey, privy.sh does work. So uh, it's there. So let me go ahead and control C out of this. Clear and exit. So now I just want a chmod plus x to privy. Oh, what's going on here? Let's see here. It didn't like that. Oh, it's tab completion was a little weird. Privy.sh. All right. And that's looking good. All right. So just dot slash privy.sh. Oh, look at this. Rbash. Privy sh restricted. I'm in, I'm in shell catraz in shell jail, right? So I got to bust out of jail here. So back to some interesting files that I have for doing those things. I'm going to split this yet again. I have another file. By cat, slow roots, documents. I just keep it all there for organizational purposes. And it's called, I think I put it called jail shell escape. Haha. <laughs> I always try to make them very user friendly, as you should as well. And here I have quite a few ways in which I might attempt to break out of a jailed shell. Uh, one of my favorite ways, I'm already logged in, so I found that this awk command worked great. So I'm going to grab that, copy and paste. And basically I'm just saying, hey, awk, do some stuff for me. And if it works, great. So you can see it's just calling the system to run the command that I want. And once I get out of this jailed shell, I should have more functionality. And that's what I'm looking for. All right, so hit enter. And you'll notice I've dropped to a, a, a regular shell, a regular born shell, not a born again shell, right? Or yes, <laughs> a regular SH shell. And then from there, I can just do bin bash. And now I'm back in, and now I should be able to do privy.sh. And you can see it is running. It's going to get all these files. So basically, this is my script to do privilege escalation. Now, once we get this running, I will go ahead and tell you that I got a whole lot of nothing out of this script the first time I ran through it. So I, I was pretty disappointed. And I thought, man, there is this is a, a tougher than it looks, but it's very still straightforward and realistic. So I liked it. I really liked this one. So now you should see I have this privy right here. Let me CD into privy. And I have all these files. I can look at things like, this is always a good one, sued GUID. But it wasn't until I looked at this MySQL, and if I cat the MySQL.txt, it didn't allow me to log in with it, but it did tell me that there was a version for it there. Right? And that was an interesting thing. So as I looked through this, um, let me back up here. And I did ls-al, 
and I start looking through all these files. You notice this one right here, dot MySQL history. Let me cat that, dot MySQL history. And in here, I saw this, show tables, select from support, insert into support, and I saw Tom's name and this little action right there. I wonder if that's his password. So I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna see if I can't MySQL as use user Tom prompt for a password, pop that in there. And hey, look, I'm logged in as Tom. Great. Again, long story short, I didn't find anything in the database that was super helpful. So I exited out of there and then I thought, I wonder if Tom's using password reuse. Because if this is his MySQL password, maybe it's his system password as well. Could possibly be. So if I do that sudo dash L and ask for the password and I paste it back in there, oh look, I have Tom's password and he's able to run all things as root. Well, that's great because now I can just do sudo bin bash and you can see that I've changed to root. If I do a who am I? Yeah, and who am I? I am root, I can cd to root. I have access to the flag, I can cats flag.txt. We win, lots of fun. And that's the kind of stuff you're gonna see in the hands-on hacking series. So if you thought that was really cool, you should definitely join us there and I hope to see you there.